All right, very exciting. After like a year and a half of effort, we finally have our first sort of beta level ability to run screen flows in Slack. And let me demonstrate it to you. I have two flows here. My first flow is what I'll call my dispatching flow. It's actually going to send the screen flow to Slack. It's going to do the, the send a message to someone saying, hey, Slack user, here's a screen flow. The screen flow is right here. And this is a pretty standard looking screen flow with some decisions and a call out to get some temperature. Uh, and so let's run this. And you can see that a message came in from Slack. Uh, I got a notification. I got a timestamp. Let's go take a look at Slack. Here's a screen flow for you to run and click launch. And now I'm running a screen flow. So I am in Tokyo, I'm going to say. And it tells me that the temperature in Tokyo is 68.7. That's Fahrenheit, do you want to do the long form? Hmm, do I want the long form? Do I want the short form? Let's try the long form. Uh, let's click on the long form. Um, uh, hmm, yeah, hmm, that's maybe too much form. Let's go back. I'm going to hit the previous button. And let's do short form. Uh, that looks a little easier. Uh, let's select a date. And we're finished. Okay, so, so what happened there was pretty potent. Now this is or this is rough and this is early. Like there's gonna be a way for you to get all that message right in line in Slack. Uh, there's gonna be more things you can do with those screen flows, but that was pretty potent. I just ran a Slack app, the equivalent of a Slack app. It took my data, it made a call out to a weather service, it got the weather, it put it into the next Slack message it sent me. It then asked me a question. Based on a question, it made a branching decision and showed me either the long form or the short form. And I could go back and forth as I wanted to. So I have this sort of rich no code app dev capability that's available in Slack. So let's talk about how to do that with Winter 23. First, let's look at the overall process. You create your screen flow, and then you mark it as available for Slack. So let's go, let's go look at that. That's here, it's right now it's in the advanced settings right here. Checking this box does two main things. One's really visible right here in screens. It filters this list of screen components down to the set of things that we currently support when we're running a screen flow in Slack. The second thing that happens is when you save this flow for the first time, it generates a dispatch action. That's what this action is right here. This is an action that was generated. You can see it's flow for Slack demo beta action. So it's got the same name, flow for Slack demo, as this screen flow. And if we were to look at our actions and filter on send message to, what you'll see here is there are eight different dispatch actions that correspond to eight different screen flows on this org that have all been had that checkbox checked. And right now, this is the only way to get a screen flow to run in Slack. There'll be other, other ways like you'll be able to create a shortcut so that right from Slack, you can initiate a screen flow. But right now, the, pa the paradigm is create the screen flow, generate the dispatch action, use the dispatch action in some sort of flow, maybe a flow that triggers off of a record change. And then from within Slack, someone can launch uh, and run the screen flow.